pretty much whatever sovereignty was left of this country to private corporate global bodies has been rammed through by the Democrats and Republicans. Obama's trade bill narrowly clears key Senate hurdle that it had failed to clear last week. Uh, deals details not released to the public. Conservatives could push over at the finish line. Mexico weighs U.S. meat products sanctions. Congressional approval ratings collapse. Yeah, polls are out on this. Over 85% of Americans in a Gallup poll last week are against the TPP. Hard to believe there's 15% that want a secret global treaty to be passed that no one's allowed to see. And WikiLeaks has released only part of it. And that's where the internet is turned over to select corporations and there's no free speech. You just can't make this stuff up. The world is plunging into tyranny. And I'll be quite frank with you, this is a very stressful job to be aware of all the things that are happening. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying sometimes if I seem angry or upset on TV or radio, it's, it's not fake. I blew up 10 minutes ago before I even went on air because it, it, it just... It is overwhelming how over the top all of this is. And that's the globalist plan. Just ram the whole stinking thing through, throw it in everybody's face, be over the top, invert reality, and then declare those of us that want basic sanity and basic freedom to be tyrants. Or those of us who aren't racist say that we're the racist. And just dumb the political debate down to the most mindless level ever imaginable. Last night and this morning, reading the news and coming in today, looking through the stacks, just all of these stories are totally insane. There's one out of uh, Associated Press. There's another one out of Reuters. Police want bikers off streets after deadly Texas shooting. And... All these days later, five, six days later, they're still saying Harley Davidson is closed across the state and they're asking bikers not to drive down highways because the snipers may come after you because we're expecting retaliation from the banditos. And the banditos are on TV going, you think we're insane to start a war with the police? Uh, I guess only George Soros does that and gets away with it. You know, Nazi collaborator. And I'm not defending the banditos. The point is, this is a major power grab. So Joe Biggs, if it quits raining, is going to ride around on his Harley today. And, and we'll ride up to cops and say, you know, do you think I'm a terrorist because I'm riding around on my motorcycle? It's just everything is a power grab nowadays. And that's just one of the cuckoo stories I've got. There's, there's hundreds of them. Yesterday, I ran into the cream of the scum. I mean, I ran into what this artificial decadent society has produced on every front. It was the most bizarre confluence of, of hypocrisy and bizarro landness. The video is up on Infowars.com. We're spending a lot of time on this today. Shock video, militant communist attack, pro-life protest. And they were pulling up in like $80,000 brand new Jaguars. I went and looked it up. And then, and then I got in my Dodge Challenger and they were screaming one percenter. I mean, it is just crazy town. And the women saying, how dare whites try to adopt black babies? Abort them, abort them. I killed my babies. I kill them. I, I mean, just... I love Satan, hail Satan. I, I mean, just, and then they're so weak on top of it. I mean, it is unbelievable. Also have Paul Watson in here. Uh, coming up at the bottom of the next hour, we're going to have uh, in studio with us uh, Jakari Jackson and Anthony Gucciardi, witnesses to just the bizarro land happening yesterday in Austin that I'm going to break down in a moment. And then we're going to have Leanne McAdoo uh, in, uh, along with Paul Watson via Skype, and then Rob Dew in the last 20 minutes of the show or so to give his breakdown on the situation. I talk about stories that are Rosetta Stones, decoders. 
if you have this decoder, if you have this 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 block that has the different uh, alphabet codes spelled out, you can then read the tea leaves. And there are a lot of these stories every day that connect the dots together, basically. <laughs> but I'll be honest with you. I did not intend, I mean, I wanted it to be, but I didn't think sending out the reporters to demonstrate and point out that Planned Parenthood was founded by Margaret Sanger and she helped set up the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute that bankrolled Hitler and that she was one of his top advisors and Hitler wrote that uh, one of her books was his, quote, Bible. And, and I cover all this in the film Endgame. I show her writings. I show it from the university archives. I show her book. I show Hitler transcripts of radio addresses, thanking Margaret Sanger. I mean, she went to Germany and met repeatedly with Hitler. So did Thomas Watson, the founder of IBM, who did have like 180 IQ, but was a flaming racist and wanted to exterminate every black person on earth. And then you notice IBM funds all the multicultural push and all this stuff because they want to get blacks on the plantation in the inner city control grid on welfare socialized so they can be destroyed and boy have they destroyed them i mean they they have wrecked the black community they have devastated it every metric shows that so regardless of where you stand on abortion i'm not judging you if you've had an abortion i'm not on some high horse i'm not saying you're a devil okay i'm pointing out where it came from and why they're pushing it and what the agenda is and then once they collectivize things, they say, see, we don't want to pay for all these poor people, kill them. We don't want to pay for these old people, kill them. We don't want to pay for these veterans, put them on no treat list. And this is what they say to me. How dare you not want to abort the black babies? Nobody wants them. And I've had whites, blacks, all of them tell me that. And I finally caught it on video. I, I've told you about being in a uh, pro-life demonstrations back when I still did stuff like that 15, 16 years ago. And it all started from guilt from abortions that I was involved in. I, I, I've never hidden that. I'm, I'm ashamed of that. But I'm honest about it. And, and I'll admit my serious failings. And I wasn't driving or pushing women to do it, but I, I, I could have pressured them, could have said, I'm going to marry you. Could It would have changed the whole course of my life. But I wish when I was 16, I'd have gotten married. I wish I wouldn't have been uh, passively involved. Or then when I was 20 again, I repent for that every day. Quite frankly, it's why I'm not afraid to die. Subconsciously, sometimes I just hope somebody walks up when I'm in public and shoots me right in the head. Because I'm a sinner, damn it. And that's what it comes down to. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes to stand up for the unborn. I don't want to die. I want to be here for my children. I want to fight the globalists. But I'm saying, at the end of the day, I am fearless. Because I know that's what I've got to do. It's something I can't even... Describe, I've got to be fearless, I've got to have the will to do whatever it takes, or I'm not going to be redeemed. And that's not out of some fear either. My soul knows it and wants to be good. And Lord knows I'm bad. Lord knows I'm bad. These little wannabes want to be wicked. What they don't know about the hearts of good men and women is that we, we our, our goodness is huge and large and strong and beautiful. Just like our whole soul is big, but our bad side is bigger, deeper, meaner, sicker than these filth could ever imagine. I cannot believe how weak servants of evil are. It's all I can do to not want to just smash them. They love death so much. Why do they want to visit it on others? Why don't they visit it on themselves? So we have events, we see things that happen, points, Rubicons that are crossed. And so it all started three weeks ago when Mikhail Phelan, one of our great writers, investigative reporters, said, you know, they're talking about Black Lives Matter all day. Uh, it's a few hundred blacks a year that get shot in questionable situations by the police. Lord knows the police in some areas are out of control, being federalized, uh, but... We ought to do a story about and put out a meme on Facebook about Black Lives Matter and show the abortion numbers, 17 million, 16 and a half, 17 million, the numbers vary, of the 56 million people since Roe v. Wade. And I said, even better, let me talk to Jakari. I know he's pro-life and a Christian. We ought to see if he wants to lead a demonstration 
just to point this out, and we're sure the media will attack it and demonize us, and then we could probably get these going around the country and try to hijack this Soros you know, war with the police movement. And then I have Reverend Childress on to promote this event and didn't even know since February he's been doing it at blackgenocide.org separately in, uh, in South Carolina and other areas and having a big effect. So see, our minds think alike because we're directed by the same energy. We're on the same page. We're brothers at a spiritual level. And that's when you really start getting into this, start warring against the globalist. You become more spiritual and you get closer to God, folks, because you will face devil worshipers. At the bottom of the rat hole is always an evil Satanist. And I've told you so many times that the anarchists, they're, not, they're never anarchists. They call themselves anarchists. They're all about deception. And I told them, I, as soon as I saw them, 10 seconds in, we went to break. I said, you see those folks in black? I can tell by their demeanor, their look. They're going to start blocking, attacking people, trying to t tear down signs. They're going to say they're anarchists. They're going to be communists. And then they're going to be Satanist. Boom, it starts getting announced instantly. And I've seen them from England uh, to Denver, Colorado, from New York City to, to L.A. Th they could be black. They could be white. They could be Hispanic. They all act and look the same, and, and they, they radiate weakness. They, they radiate fallenness. They radiate just a death wish for innocence. They radiate hell. And I don't like being in their presence because I'm going to be honest. I just, I mean, they are, they are an abomination. They, they, are, they are what comes after the innocents. They are the enemy. They are the enemy manifest. And if you don't want to throw yourself against that, God's spirit's not in you. And I'm not up on some high horse, folks. I'm here to tell you right now, if you aren't repulsed by these people, something's wrong. Now, we go out to this demonstration. The videos are on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And I see him being mean to David Knight's wife, getting in her face, shoving on her. I say, that's it. I'm going down there. I, I, I get there. A bunch of them run and leave when they see me arrive. I get out. I go over. I'm just doing interviews. I'm being nice. They come over and cuss on the microphone. Then they all link arms, try to run over us, knocking people over. One of them punches me, grabs at me, grabs the mic, I get it back, grabs it again. Everybody's seen the video or heard it happen live on the radio here. The video's on Infowars.com. But we didn't know who we were dealing with. I just said they're going to, I could just look at them. On Skype for five seconds, go to break. I told the whole crew, I said, well, I said on air too. I said, those are going to be, they're going to say they're anarchists, then they're going to be communists, but that's only going to be a front for a bloodlust. And I've been around communists more than 100 times. We have footage, actually. We have a footage a few times in uh, New York. It's the same group, uh, Maoist uh, Red Guard. It's a real national group. And there were these older folks there, and they come over, and then I go, well, Stalin killed millions, and Mao killed millions, and they go, too bad they didn't kill you. And as soon as we turned away and walked off, they walk over, and we go, they said, we take over, you're dead. And I had a major well-known socialist here a few years ago to be in a film, and I couldn't morally even put him in the film because I went to dinner with him and Rob Dew was there. And he said, listen, we take over, we're going to kill millions. There's going to be blood. You better join us. We're going to kill. We want blood. We want death. And see, when you learn that Lenin was really a Satanist, all of it clicks. And that's even in mainline history books you can dig in. He was a devil worshiper. And this group's on their site saying they want red terror against me and all the rest of this. <laughs> As if I'm, I go up against the globalists, the heart, their masters, George Soros, the Nazi collaborator that funds these anti-police groups. Do you think I fear you? I mean, what a joke. You are only one tiny little magnifying glass of, of the rot for us to examine as a study piece. Uh, as an educational prop, um, as a textbook example of, of what serving wickedness will turn you into. When we come back, I'm going to get into all of it, but then we go to their Facebook, and it's, it's all them. We ask them, you know, are you these communists? Are you doing And they say, no, that's not us. When it's all them, we have their names, everything. It's on their Facebook. They didn't shield their private group settings. And it's all how we're going to kill the police and all this other stuff. 
I mean, it is just, it is insane, folks. We'll be right back. Stay with us.